I'm just staring into the viewfinder. It's quite bright. It's quite bright, isn't it? Quite bright. Okay. Hey guys, this is the ASMR game, and welcome back to another 50 Facts video. 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 I've done one of these before where I did 50 Facts about the UK. Uh, I'll try to remember to put up a card if you haven't seen it. And uh, you guys seem to sort of really like that. I find them quite interesting ASMR videos because uh, I think with ASMR there's obviously like the relaxation element. But I think what I find really relaxing is especially if like the topic or something is really interesting. And I'm uh, really into history, big into history. I studied history throughout school. Um, and I considered taking it to university but I went with marketing because I thought, hey, adverts. Um, yeah, so we're doing a... a 50 interesting history facts. And this spans five, five historical epochs. So we've got a broad ancient history section, uh, a section on World War II, Henry VIII, um, Japan, and the, the colonies. Yeah, sorry, I'll just get my papers in order. history from all over the world so hopefully yeah, there's something for everyone in this video i hope you find it relaxing i'm filming during the day in this video that's why it may seem a little brighter and less sort of darker like my previous videos but i hope you guys find this video entertaining and relaxing and if you do hit that like button and if you're new hit that subscribe button as we try to get to 70,000 subscribers ah. so so, enough of the jabbering, the jibber, uh, the jabber. Let's get into this. Okay, so starting with ancient history. One of the most notable and notorious Roman emperors was Caligula. Despite his short reign, he was assassinated by officers in the Praetorian Guard. You may remember him as the emperor who made his horse a senator. Caligula also allegedly committed incest with his sisters, fed prisoners to wild beasts, and had conversations with the moon. Cracking guy. Sometimes the Romans would flood the whole Colosseum or Circus Maximus for a boat to battle. Big boats topped with warriors fought it out in the water and were completed down to the live props such as alligators. Romans used to wash clothes in urine because urine contains ammonia, a powerful bleaching agent. Ancient Romans used to wash their clothes uh, in pee. At many street corners there were public urinals that men could use and their contents were collected every day and brought to the laundries. An unknown civilization brought 150 mile, brought stones 150 miles to help build Stonehenge. An early European people, known only as the Bell Beaker civilization, likely moved the blue stones, which each weigh four tons, to the Wiltshire, England monument, sometime between two, uh, 2600 and 1600 BC. Experts aren't sure why they would do this, but theorise that the stones could have been used for their healing powers. The ancient Egyptians invented toothpaste. It was made of rock salt, pepper, mint and dried iris flowers. Ancient South Americans, not Egyptians, invented the mummification process. The Chinjaro people of Chile's Atacama Desert had been mummifying their dead for 2,000 years prior to the Egyptians. They peeled back the corpse's skin, removed the muscles and organs, and filled the body with plants before sewing the skin back on and placing a mask over the face. There was cultural appropriation back then. Between 300 BC and 300 AD, the ancient Japanese buried people in jars. The pottery 
jars would vary in size and the quality of trinkets placed in or around the jars would denote upper from lower class citizens. Ancient Egypt had the earliest documented governmental healthcare plan. Egyptologists have evidence of these healthcare benefits in preserved records from the site of Luxor, where the craftsmen of the 12th century BC who built the Egyptian pharaoh's tombs could take a paid sick day or receive a free health checkup. As many as 400,000 people died during the construction of the Great Wall of China in the 3rd century BC. Many of these workers were convicts and soldiers and were buried within the wall itself. Horse riding nomadic herders in Central Asia invented pants. The ancient wool trousers were unearthed in Western China and carbon dated to between the 13th and 10th centuries BC. Whoa, 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 whoa. there's some old pants. Old, old pants. Now we move on to World War II. You know, Travelling in time. The country with a lot over here to read it. <laughs> the country with the largest number of World War II casualties was Russia with over 21 million. For every five German soldiers who died in World War II, four of them died on the Eastern Front. Wow. This, this, this is staggering. 80% of Soviet males before born in 1923 didn't survive World War II. Between 1939 and 1945, the Allies dropped 3.4 million tons of bombs, which averaged to 27,700 a month. Most historians agree that World War II began when Germany invaded Poland on September the 1st, 1939. Others say it started when Japan invaded Manchuria on September 18th, 1931. And some scholars suggest World War II is actually a continuation of World War I with a break in between. Yeah. Some, uh, some historians believe that the fallout of the uh, Treaty of Versailles, the Peace Treaty, signed after World War I, um, was a major catalyst towards World War II because of how severe it crippled Germany's uh, infrastructure and economy. Um, so there was a 6.6 .6 billion I forgot the currency, uh, reparations to France that was uh, devastated by the war. There was um, the limitation of the military to 100,000 men, uh, which was a severe um, imposition of uh, the Germans who uh, had an incredibly proud military history. And another clause was the war killed clause, so essentially Germany took all the blame. So, um, people suggest that, that created a sort of powder keg um, for World War II. Um, the Battle of the Bulge is the largest and deadliest battle for US troops to date, with more than 80,000 American casualties. During World War II, the Japanese launched 9,000 wind ship weapons of paper and rubberized silk balloons that carried incendiary and anti-personnel bombs to the US. More than 1,000 balloons hit their targets and they reached as far as East Michigan. In 1935, British engineer Robert Watson Watt, Watt was working on a death ray that would destroy enemy aircraft using radio waves. His death ray, however, instead evolved into radar or radio detection and ranging, which completely changed um, um, how the war um, developed. Um, I believe, because during like the mid 30s, I think it was Joseph Chamberlain, um, was following a, a policy of appeasement with Nazi Germany. And um, I think some people erroneously think that this delay was to enable um, the production of the radar 
that's when we did eventually go to war uh, under Churchill. Uh, we had that capability. In 1941, a private earned $21 a month. In 1942, they earned more than double that, $50 a month. And finally, finally, the SS ran a brothel named the Kitty Salon for foreign diplomats and other VIPs in Berlin. It was wiretapped and 20 prostitutes underwent several weeks of intense indoctrination and training. They were specifically trained to glean information from clients through seemingly innocuous, innocuous conversations. So there are my fun facts on World War II. We now we'll go back in time, go back in time to uh, 16th century England, to Henry VIII. Henry VIII, probably one of the most famous English monarchs. Um, he was quite, quite large, uh, only in his later life, but obviously famous for having six wives who were divorced, bearded, died, divorced, bearded, and survived. So, let's go into Tudor England. King Henry VIII authorised the Great Bible, the first authorised edition of the Bible in English to be read aloud in church. It was completed in 1539 and went through revisions between 1540 and 1541. I'm just going to have a drink. No cappuccino, no, no Americano today, just some water. excommunicated from the Catholic Church in 1538. Excommunication means refusing to give someone communion and disallowing them from being involved in the church. This was actually a deliberate maneuver uh, from Henry VIII because he was trying to get a divorce from Catherine of Aragon, his first wife, because um, he needed a son and she wasn't giving him a son. He was feverishly obsessed with um, uh, succession and the lack of son. He was like, well, I need a son. But the Pope was like, well, no. Marriage to Catherine of Aragon was legitimate. And Henry was like, no, it's not. And the argument he used was the fact that um, Catherine of Aragon was actually married to Henry VIII's brother. But he died. And it all hung up on gone whether the, the marriage was consummated. Um, Catherine of Aragon, um, like the Aragonites, took the line that the wedding, I mean, the marriage wasn't consummated, um, and therefore she was free to then marry Henry VIII. Henry VIII was like, no, you consummated that, that marriage, therefore you're my brother's widow, and in the Bible, I can't be married to you, so it should be dissolved. Um, and also, Henry, that's what led Henry to um, enact the Act of Supremacy in, I think, 1539, which established the Church of England, um, which is separated um, from the, the Bishop of Rome and created, it. he was head of both state and um, the Church. So, fun facts. Henry VIII introduced a tax on beards, which varied with the beard wearer's social status, apparently. He also made a boiling a legal form of capital punishment. Between 1536 and 1541, Henry VIII disbanded monasteries and other Catholic religious houses and appropriated their income. The monks who surrendered were rewarded, while those few who were resisted were executed. Again, this was a, a really, really major part of um, Henry VIII's sort of reign. It was incredibly um, uh, focused on the idea of succession, but also religious and piety. The, uh, it's called the dissolution of the monasteries. Basically, like says, 
dissolved with the monasteries, which were incredibly wealthy uh, landowners. Um, and yeah, and I believe that's what led his like advisor, Thomas, not, it wasn't Cromwell, it was before, before him. Although it was a long time, was it? He wrote, he, ended up, he actually wrote the book Utopia, whoever his advisor was. Um, but yeah, basically, the, dis um, the monasteries were dissolved. Oh, yeah, I actually came out with this fact uh, before. Henry VIII founded the Anglican Church, Church of England by breaking away from the Catholic Church, the act of supremacy, mainly because the Pope refused to grant Henry the annulment of his marriage to Catherine of Aragon. Henry was gifted a bear by the King of Norway, described as a white bear. It was probably a polar bear and was allowed to swim and hunt in the Thames River on a long leash. Henry's waist size was 54 inches in the obese stage of his life. It was always intended that Henry's older brother Arthur would take over their father as the King of England, while Henry was merely the Lord Lieutenant of Ireland and the Earl Marshal of England. Arthur held the Prince of Wales title. Arthur died rather unexpectedly at the age of 15, not long after getting married to Catherine of Aragon from Spain, hence it was like, well, it wasn't consummated. And finally, Henry was buried at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle with third wife Jane Seymour. He considered her his only true wife, since she was the only one of the six to bear him a son, Edward, uh, who ended up dying. Yeah, she was the one who died. She, um, she wasn't uh, executed or divorced. So we now move forward in time. <laughs> a couple hundred years, because we're going to the colonies. We're going to the American colonies, or the British colonies in America. Let's go. We're going on a pilgrimage. Delaware's faceless founding father. Delaware's state quarter features a picture of founding father, Caesar Rodney. Even though historians don't know what Rodney looked like, Rodney had a severe form of facial cancer, always kept his face covered with a green cloth, and never had his portrait painted. But that didn't stop him from making an epic 80-mile ride on horseback in 1776, just in time to sign the Declaration of Independence. I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. Connecticut was home to the Battle of the Frogs. One hot summer night during a terrible drought in 1758, a cacophony woke the residents of Wyndham, Connecticut, now part of Willimantic. In a panic, because they believed they were under attack from Indians, Native Americans, the citizens armed themselves and headed toward the commotion to discover terrible carnage. Except the damage wasn't human. Thousands of frogs had fought to the death over the last bit of water in the town pond. <laughs> Maryland pulled one over on the breadcoats. During the War of 1812, residents of St. Michael's, Maryland, fooled British artillerymen by hoisting lamps onto ships, masts, and the top of trees. Only one house, known as the Cannonball House, was struck, as the height of the lights caused British cannonballs to overshoot the town. England's first attempt to establish a colony occurred in 1607 off the coast of Maine by the Plymouth Company but it failed. The Plymouth Company colony was not established until 1620, I believe the Mayflower. Between 1700 and 1775, 75, 75, the population of the colonies grew from approximately 250,000 to almost two and a half million. Pennsylvania's formation settled a debt. King Charles II owed William Penn, a wealthy, high-class Briton, 16,000 British pounds. Penn, however, had converted to Quakerism, a religious group persecuted for its pacifist beliefs. He saw the opportunity to create a haven for the Quakers and asked Charles II for land in lieu of money. In 
1681, the king signed over the land between Maryland and New York to Penn, and Pennsylvania was born. Rhode Island was the first state to renounce its allegiance to the British Empire on May the 4th, 1776. It would also be the last state to ratify the new US Constitution. Oops, I'm just blocking your view there. In 1587, surveyor and expedition leader John White left 117 settlers, including his pregnant daughter, on Roanoke Island on the coast of what is now North Carolina. By the time that White made it back three years later, the settlers had vanished. Bodies were buried in unmarked graves to conceal the colony's decline in manpower, crafty, and mail order brides helped populate and save Jamestown. So we now move on to the final, the final, the final, the final, final um, section, which is sort of feudal Japan. So we're sort of going back in time a little bit, but also alongside it as well. We're going everywhere in this video. I'm sorry, itchy nose. Itchy, itchy nose. History. Knowledge. Feudal systems of government are characterised by warlords that hold peasants' allegiance in return for military protection. In Japan's feudal system, however, there actually was an emperor. This emperor, though, had very little power and functioned more like a figurehead. Women could become samurai, raising themselves above the peasant classes, although still below male samurai. In fact, fighting Japanese women were not unheard of at that time, as women had long been trained to fight using certain weapons, like the Najinata. Naginata. Hierarchy was big in Japan during the years of feudalism. Above all, the peasants were the warrior. Above all, the peasants were the warrior classes, but there were different levels in the peasant classes themselves. Farmers rated rated as highest, followed by skilled craftsmen. Farmers, the backbone of every nation. The shogunate in the mid 1200s did not care much for foreign relations. So, in 1268, when Kublai Khan became leader of the Mongols and demanded that Japan submit to him, the Japanese more or less ignored him. Kublai attacked, landing his men in Kyushu, and then attacked seven years later on the same island. And I believe the second time, uh, typhoons, massive typhoons, like wrecked him the invasion, and those typhoons were called kamikaze, I believe that's where kamikaze comes from, a divine wind. In 1582, Spanish missionaries led by Saint Francis Xavier managed to, uh, you know, X-Men, Pope men, managed to convert anywhere up to 150,000 Japanese people to Christianity. Sadly, the shogunate was having none of that, and outright persecutions began 15 years later. When feudalism ended in Japan, exclusion and persecution of Christians became the national policy under the Tokugawa administration. In the 20th century, in an effort to unify the ideology of the samurai, Nitobi Inazo envisioned Bushido as being made up of eight virtues. These were righteousness, heroic courage, benevolence or compassion, respect, honesty, honor, duty and loyalty, and finally self-control. Although their armor made them seem imposing, samurai were actually fairly small humans, with the average 16th century samurai being between 5 foot 3 and 5 foot 5 in height. The majority of those in the samurai class were very well educated, with levels of literacy and mathematical skills being quite high, especially in comparison to Europeans of the same time period. While the Japanese were notoriously judgmental when it came to purity of race, the samurai were noticeably hairier and lighter 
skinned, suggesting that they may have descended from an ethnic group called the Ainu, who, ironically, were considered inferior by the Japanese and were often the subject of discrimination. And finally, the final, 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 final fact of the video. Though Western samurai were extremely few and far between, we do know a small handful of men who were granted the privilege to become samurai and take up the way of the warrior. One of them was William Ad Adams, who started off as an English sailor working for the Dutch East India Company. In 1600, his ship was one of the only few vessels to survive the journey to Japan, and soon after, Adams and his second mate, Jan Houston, settled in the country. Adams became an advisor to the reigning shogun Tokugawa uh, Iyashu, and he, along with uh, Jutsun, Justin, uh, was soon given the right to call himself a samurai, but it came at a high cost. Adams had a wife and child back home in England, but Tokugawa refused to let him leave Japan, renaming Adams as Miura Anjin, and declaring that William Adams was dead and that his old wife was effectively a widow. Adams did indeed stay in Japan, and he even remarried, but he never forgot his widow, and still sent her payments to help support her across the ocean. So guys, there we have 50 facts, 50 historical facts. Let me know in the comments if you liked this sort of video. I thought it was a cool idea to do like 10 facts of like different time periods just to keep it spicy rather than you know, 50 facts about the same um, you know, time period just because that could seem a bit, um, well, drudgy. Sort of like, yeah, wading through fact upon fact. Where's this? Light, breezy, and I thought some of these were, yeah, really quite interesting. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, it's been lovely to spend this time with you. Um, I'm now going to go edit this video. Edit, 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 edit this video. But, yeah, like I say, I hope you're doing really, really well. Hopefully, yeah, like I say, you found it interesting, you found some facts that you may not have known before, certainly for me. And yeah, I will see you all in a couple nights for the next video. Not sure what it's going to be. Not sure. Not sure. I'm not sure. But guys, yeah, it's been an absolute privilege to spend this time with you. So, from me, as always.